NPS Arrowhead with text that reads Cuyahoga Valley National Park, www.nps.gov backslash CUFA. To better serve audiences with visual needs, this video contains audio description of visual elements. Hi everyone, I'm Ranger Cami from Cuyahoga Valley National Park. And today I'm here in my classic flat hat, gray shirt, and green pants. And I'm right here by a pond in the woods in our park. And today I'm gonna to tell you the story of one of the most famous birds we have here in our park one that has not always been around, the bald eagle. Today, the bald eagle is a highly protected bird. However, that has not always been the case. For many years, the bald eagle was left to fend for itself. Instead of being protected by humans, it was hunted into endangerment. So how does society decide who, or in this case, what they want to protect? First, I want you to take a moment and think about who or what you protect in your own life. Is it a person, a place, a thing? Personally, I'm very protective over my two dogs, and I would do anything to make sure that they're always safe. So bald eagles used to be plentiful here in Cuyahoga Valley and in many places across the country until they faced challenges that left them on the endangered species list. 75 years ago, before Cuyahoga Valley was a national park, the Cuyahoga River was extremely polluted. This meant that animals that needed the river to find food in or to live in could not survive in this area. This included bald eagles whose main source of food is fish. Not only were bald eagles struggling to survive in this valley, they were struggling to survive across the country. They were being heavily hunted and the fish they were eating was being contaminated with a harmful pesticide called DDT. So this meant that the bird that is the symbol of our nation was nearly wiped out of this country. And then in the 1960s, they were officially landed on the endangered species list. I want you to think back to a time when you felt unsafe. Who or what did you turn to during this time for protection? So what had to happen to allow bald eagles to bounce back across the country, get taken off the endangered species list, and find a home in here in our park? Well, two things had to happen for bald eagles to bounce back across the country. First, the pesticide DDT was heavily restricted, and second, the government enacted laws protecting bald eagles. These laws prevented people from hunting or harming bald eagles and their nests. These laws included things like the Lacey Act, the Eagle Act, and the Migratory Bird Treaty Act. However, a third thing had to happen for bald eagles to bounce back in this valley. The Cuyahoga River was cleaned up. Here is an image of the Cuyahoga River in the 1960s when it was so polluted it caught on fire. This image is in black and white and there are big flames in the polluted river and there is a fireboat shooting a spray of water trying to put out the flames. And now here's an image of the Cuyahoga River today clean enough that people are able to safely recreate in it and it could sustain a healthy fish population. In this image, you can see kayakers enjoying their day on our river. The cleanup of the Cuyahoga River began with Carl Stokes, who was the mayor of Cleveland during the time of the fires. He was also the first black mayor of a major US city. He teamed up with environmental reporter Betty Clarick and they led the media on a tour of the horrible pollution. This helped spark a national environmental movement and helped create agencies like the Northeast Ohio Sewer District and the Ohio Environmental Protection Agency. And last year in 2019, the Cuyahoga Valley National Park and the city of Cleveland celebrated 50 years since the last time the river burned. Cleaning up the river is one of our park's proudest accomplishments. What is something that you're proud of? And finally, in 2006, bald eagles found their way back to Cuyahoga Valley and a year later they were taken off the endangered species list. And in that same year, the first nest was built in our park in over 70 years. That nest is still around and in use today and is located in Brecksville near the Station Road Bridge. Nearly every year since that nest was built, an eaglet has hatched. And this year we had one successfully fledge or leave the nest. To help keep bald eagles here in our park, it is important that you always view them from a safe distance. Make sure to stay at least 200 yards back when you see any bald eagles and be aware that nesting eagles are extremely sensitive to any disturbances because they can cause a distraction which could harm their eaglet. So get out your binoculars and see if you can spot this iconic white-headed, brown-bodied, yellow-footed bird. Now, I want you to talk to someone at home or just think to yourself, what is something that resonated with you about the story of the bald eagle? Immense progress has been made since the 1930s when the Cuyahoga River was so polluted it was catching on fire and bald eagles were thought to be lost in Ohio. With the right amount of protection, the Cuyahoga River was able to be cleaned up so that it could sustain a healthy fish population and bald eagles could find their home again in our valley. Bald eagles are not only a symbol of our nation, they are a symbol of wildlife resiliency and the human ability to learn from our mistakes and help our planet heal. 
They show that society changes who and what they protect, and how that protection can lead to a ripple effect of change in our world. However, there are still 17 species of plants and animals in the Midwest region that are on the endangered species list, including Kirtland's warbler and the Indiana bat. So, who or what would you choose to protect today? Lastly, let me leave you with a quote from Wangari Maathai, a Kenyan environmental activist and the first black African woman to win the Nobel Peace Prize in 2004. Recognizing that sustainable development, democracy and peace are indivisible is an idea whose time has come. Today, we are faced with a challenge that calls for a shift in our thinking so that humanity stops threatening its life support system. We are called to assist the earth and heal her wounds and in the process, heal our own. Indeed, to embrace the whole of creation and all of its diversity, beauty, and wonder. Thank you so much for listening with me today. I hope you guys have a great day and can visit our park safely soon.